China has lashed out at the United States after Washington declared that it no longer considers Hong Kong politically autonomous from Beijing. China has described the statement as unreasonable and shameless. Washington could revoke Hong Kong's special status, and that means that the city could be stripped of trading and economic privileges. Now, at the same time, tensions are soaring as China moves one step closer towards implementing a controversial national security law in Hong Kong. The National People's Congress has approved plans to move forward with this legislation. Of the over 2,800 members, only one person opposed the proposal. Jeremy Coe has more. China has made Hong Kong's national security law a top priority in this year's parliamentary sessions. This after huge protests rocked the city for seven months last year. The new law bans succession, subversion of state power, terrorism and foreign intervention. It also allows mainland security agencies to operate openly in Hong Kong. China has said the legislation targets a very narrow category of acts that seriously jeopardize national security and has no impact on Hong Kong's high degree of autonomy. And when asked if China is abandoning the one country, two systems model for Hong Kong, Chinese Premier Li Keqiang stressed that it remains China's national policy. But a new law has already prompted an immediate pushback in Hong Kong. Western nations too have warned against infringing on the city's civil liberties. US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, for instance, said Hong Kong no longer qualified for special treatment under US law. This paves the way for the US government to end some or all of the US's special trade and economic relations with Hong Kong. And on Wednesday, the US and China clashed over Hong Kong at the United Nations after Beijing opposed a request by Washington for the Security Council to meet over the national security legislation. So the Hong Kong issue is likely to um, add more friction uh, to the bilateral uh, relationship. Uh, China appears to be very determined uh, to uh, push through the uh, national security law. Uh, the uh, feeling is that uh, it feels that it has waited long enough and that it wants to implement uh, social stability uh, quickly. Several critical details of the law have yet to be clarified, including how it will define crimes as well as foreign interference. The Understanding Committee of China's National People's Congress is now tasked with formulating the legislation, a process that's expected to take about two months. The new law is expected to be enacted before September, when Hong Kong holds elections for its highest legislative body, the Legislative Council. Well, for a closer look at what's happening in Hong Kong, we're joined now by Andrew Shen. He's research director at the Lion Rock Institute. Andrew, China has now approved the uh, pushing through of this new national security law. We don't have the details yet, but can we expect the state of unrest in Hong Kong now to worsen? Yeah. It depends on the uh, details and, of course, the execution of the law. Uh, there are plenty of laws currently on the books uh, that is against, say, uh, congregation of individuals, uh, congregation of more than three individuals, uh, against violent acts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, even with the uh, the full force of the Hong Kong police, um, it, it hasn't stopped. So it, it really depends on the uh, the details and the execution. Uh, as for the unrest in Hong Kong, I feel that it will continue unless uh, there is some perhaps compromise from Beijing. But as the previous guest said, that uh, they have no appetite for that. So uh, the the more important thing, I think, would be the uh, the uh, reaction from the Americans and perhaps the rest of the world for this law. Uh, is not the law or the Hong Kong's uh, autonomous status that is in their minds right now, but the inability of the Beijing government, at least in their minds, to keep to uh, treaties and promises. Uh, if they can break this one, then especially with Hong Kong being so important, if they can break this particular promise, then uh, what else can they be credibly believed in? Uh, the, uh, the, the Western nations or the rest of the world actually has always dealt with China on the basis of uh, three particular considerations. Uh, the first one that it was emerging from totalitarian commu communism, uh, it was uh, it has nuclear arms, and three, perhaps more most importantly, and the one that China relies on most is that it is extremely lucrative to uh, trade uh, with China. But uh, the uh, the biggest problem, apart from the credibility problem, is that with the COVID nineteen incident, uh, every nation's people, uh, let alone the governments, 
are sitting back in their lockdown homes and thinking of all the money we made dealing with China, how much of it now compensates for the economic impact uh, by by giving them uh, leeway to do whatever they want. So uh, it is a bigger picture right now all over the world. But I think that the sentiment around the world is not in support of Hong Kong per se, but that this particular Hong Kong law or this passage of the uh, national security law is symptomatic of everything that is wrong uh, with with China. And with that particular sentiment, I'm extremely worried because public sentiments around the world is extremely hard to move on a particular nation. But when it does move, and it, it is extremely hard to be reversed again, and drastic actions will be taken. Uh, take, take, for example, the 1930s on Germany. Uh, the United Kingdom always had a voice. Uh, Andrew, we're getting a bit off track here. Well, Could we just bring the conversation back to Hong Kong? If we could, I just want to get your thoughts and the Hong Kong people as well with the with, with the U.S. declaring that Hong Kong no longer or it says is no longer autonomous from China, which at the moment is sort of rhetoric from the U.S. side. And does that actually have any consequences on Hong Kong? Of course, uh, everything from student visa applications to the way that bank transfers are done uh, to perhaps even uh, the way that accounting standards uh track tax treaties, everything would be touched. So uh, it is, um, how should I put this? It is extremely bad for people, people of Hong Kong. There is, there, is no, there is no dance around it. Um, but uh, the sentiment in Hong Kong, especially from the, uh, the election results from last year's district council elections, seems that the, the people of Hong Kong is willing to uh, take this fight, uh, even if it hurts themselves. A lot, and that—that that is uh, the unfortunate situation here right now. Thank you. Well, thanks very much for your thoughts this evening, Andrew Shen, research director at the Lion Rock Institute.